Welcome, everybody. Hey, good afternoon. All right. So uh, thanks, guys. Uh, thanks for joining for another AIGA Insider here. Uh, we have a special guest, Brian Rice, here to talk with us today about some key lessons that he learned through his successful in-house design career. Uh, using design thinking to help navigate through a corporate environment. So we're really excited to talk with him today about that. Uh, he was most recently head of design uh, and consumer business at Georgia Pacific, overseeing the design graphics and the packaging innovation department. His role involved being a mentor, design thinker, and creative leader to inspire those that he worked with to think differently to solve anything, not just design problems. So it'll be fun to talk about all that today. Uh, he has over 25 years of experience in the field, including working at Coca-Cola and Procter & Gamble, to name a few of them. And we have a ton to learn from him today, but first, as always, we want to start by thanking our in-house committee and our dedicated team. So, Sam, I'll pass it off to you. Yeah, so I'm Sam Delafro, and I'm co-hosting today with Lucas. Um, we've got another installation of our Insider webinar this month, and like you said, we'll be talking with Brian Rice. So really excited to, to bring some of his knowledge and experience to the in-house community. Um, but although Lucas and I are the hosts today, we do have a committee of in-house folks uh, that work together to put this program together every month. So a quick shout out to the team here on this slide. And next up, I think I'll pass it to Amy for a market minute. Thanks, Sam. Hey guys, I'm Amy Mangan with TCG, the creative group. Excited to chat with you about the September market minute. So um in uh last month in august uh zillow actually announced that they're going to be putting a southeast hub here in atlanta um, we should expect to see about 200 new jobs come out of that and it does look like some of them will actually be um, in the digital and creative space so that's exciting also inc 5000 just released their um 5,000 fastest growing private companies in the US from 2020. And the number one company on the entire list was right here in Atlanta, OneTrust, digital software firm. So that was exciting. Um, there were some other great companies locally as well, goods and services rented. And there were many, many more um, many, many more companies from our market that were here. So if you're in the market for a job, you're looking right now, I would suggest Googling that list, then going to those career pages and actually putting um, some Google alerts on them so that if they post any new jobs that you might get a chance to maybe join. Um, speaking of job postings on a national level, we also saw that um, between May and June, specifically graphic design postings um, increased by 28% month over month. So that's huge. Um, and we continue to see that trend of growth throughout the summer as well. And then on the next slide, so I'm going to warn you guys, there's a lot of content here. Sorry, it's like not the best slide. Take a screen cap. It's pretty awesome. Um, but what I want to highlight is a couple things. So excuse me, throughout COVID, um, how it impacted the creative and marketing teams that we were chatting with. Basically, they did do layoffs in a lot of cases. That happened early and it happened swiftly. From there, those skeleton crews um, sort of were at a stasis for a time and then work started to flow in pretty rapidly. Companies were shifting heavily digital. That that uh, work did fall to the in-house teams typically. Um, and those teams were being asked to do a lot more with a lot fewer uh, people on the team and a lot less resources. So we did see an increase pretty rapidly in flexible staffing needs. So clients reaching out to use freelancers, to use um, contractors on an as needed basis, so they could scale with the work and scale with their budget. Um, and we have finally seen a lot of the hiring freezes that were happening around the country and specifically here in Atlanta with a lot of larger firms. We did, we are starting to see those lifted um, sort of uh, across the board. And some companies still have some, we're expecting to see many by the end of the year that start to get removed as well. So um, throughout, we did see low unemployment rates for UX design, uh, digital design, you know, and copywriters and front end devs. Traditional just sort of 
collapse for a minute, but we're actually really starting to see that come back, which is good news. Um, below that, some industries that are hiring, these are on a national basis, but here in Atlanta, we saw heavy retail and e-commerce, also technology. And then it's not on the list, but in Atlanta, we really did see a lot of manufacturing and um, also in uh, insurance companies were hiring quite a bit throughout the pandemic. So that was um, kind of what we saw locally. Um, In-demand positions, we've absolutely seen those uh, graphic design roles coming back over the summer, as I mentioned, but we saw a lot of a heavy increase in digital marketing uh, specialist requests through uh, the pandemic, and that actually remains true now. Um, on the top right, I just want to highlight a couple of things that creative and marketing leaders are telling us that they'll be prioritizing through the end of the year. So developing digital marketing campaigns obviously that's nothing new, but we continue to see that as a big focus, as well as improving customer experience. So lots of companies, especially those that have an e-commerce um, site, are focused on customer experience. We know from research that 88% um, of users will absolutely bounce from a site if it's not a good UX, they won't buy anything, and they make that, that decision within 10 seconds, which is pretty terrifying if you're a UX designer or a customer experience designer. So um, companies are investing in that, making sure that they've got good um, usability and sites are seamless. Also, they're working on strategizing new content projects and then continuing to focus on internal and external comms as well. Um, there's a lot more great stuff on there. I hope you got a screenshot. If you want the entire report, just contact me. I'm happy to send it. This is just one snippet of what came out. And then last but not least, I'd like to put a plug in for the TCG 2021 salary guide. Um, that'll be available after the 14th, um, which is soon. It's already September. Um, and so this is salaries for creative marketing and digital folks. Uh, nationally, and it's also from entry level all the way up to late career. We typically split it out between agency as well as in-house, so you can kind of see how that compares and contrasts, um, but it's not just about salaries. One thing I'll note is that nowadays we're seeing clients are hiring nationally. There's a lot less emphasis on having a, a a person in the local market because the work's being done remotely regardless. So we have data in there that helps you understand and scale to whatever market the person sits in. So if your team's in Atlanta, but you've got somebody in Dallas or in Birmingham, for instance, that could really shift what you're could be expected to pay given um, you know, the demand in those markets and obviously cost of living as well. Um, in addition to that, it also has perks, benefits, and um, it has been updated since COVID. So it's not like old data or anything. So really excited for that to come out um, in a couple of weeks. If you'd like a copy, it's free, of course. Um, just shoot me an email, hook up with me on LinkedIn, and we can plan a time later in September to make sure that you get that. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to Lucas. Awesome. Thanks, Amy. That's a lot of really good information. I'm going to check that out too later. Um, so back to the talk. We're really excited to talk to Brian today. I uh, gave you a brief introduction into his background, but we're going to dive a little deeper here. Uh, excited to hear about all the, the knowledge and experience he has in in-house specifically, uh, and especially with those big companies. So without further ado, uh, Brian, if you could just give us a little bit of a background for you uh, of how you get great work done in-house. Well, I will do my best, but before I jump into it, um, thank you, Lucas and Sam and your, your AIGA in-house committee. Um, I got to plug you guys because as a former uh, board member who actually once led this team, right? You know, this, this, was, this is a dream, you know, a dream come true. And so I'm glad that you guys have turned this uh, or reframed this COVID situation into something that, uh, that is hopefully beneficial for folks. And so kudos to you guys for, for making, that, uh, making that happen. Um, you, you know, I could probably spend an hour, <laughs> uh, you know, talking about, you know, my career path. And so I, I won't, uh, I, I won't bore you with all of it. Um, but I will share, um, you, you know, kind of, you know, how I've gotten to, to this point, and then we can, um, we can back up uh, as we as we need to. And so, um, and so I grew up uh, um, in uh, Central Florida, kind of in the, uh, in the shadows of, you know, tourism and entertainment, and of course, Disney. And so this fascination with, uh, with brands um, started at a, a very early age, right? And so that iconic Mickey Mouse or, you know, all of those things that you would see around town, I was just fascinated by it and um, went through grade school and high school, pretty, pretty good at the left brain stuff, but I was always drawn to the right brain stuff. 
and um, all the creative kinds of things. And but you know, kind of growing up, um, certainly my generation didn't know a lot about design, right? We knew about art, right? The the starving artists in the park, but not about design, and certainly not a career path. And so I got that lecture that you know you guys probably got. Okay, you're either going to be a, a lawyer, a doctor, right? A teacher, right? Yeah. An engineer, you know, kind of those reputable careers. And um, and so um, and so I decided I was going to be an engineer. Didn't know anything about engineering. Um, but I got a full ride uh, at, at uh, Florida A&M on an academic scholarship. And so again, right, left brain, right brain kind of kind of thing. I go into Florida A&M um, and my first engineering class, I was like, nah, this is not going to work, <laughs> you know? And so it just did not have anything that I was remotely interested in. And um, to make a long story short, and this is, I know we're gonna talk about mentoring and advisors. You know, I did what most college students would do, go talk to your advisor, right? Surely they know a little bit more that, that, than you know. And they said, you ought to go down there and talk to this group, they're called graphic communication, da, 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 da. I think based on what you're telling me you like to do, kind of in your, in your free time, I wanna go talk to those guys. So run down to, uh, to um, the uh, design department, it was called graphic communications at the time, um, and fell in love. And I was like, oh, this is so like what I like to do. It's a little bit of left brain, it's probably more right brain, um, and then quickly changed my major. So changed my major, didn't tell my parents, I'll, I'll tell you that story later. <laughs> um, and so I changed my major. Um, and get to my senior year. Um, and um, I, I started thinking about my career and saying to myself, well, I may want to go into an agency and be a designer and then maybe move up the ranks, art director, creative director. And I said, well, maybe one day I might want to run my own agency. And so maybe I ought to take some business management classes. And so uh, as an elective, I take like intro to business management, intro to marketing, uh, to kind of fill the, you know, the, 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 the schedule out. And, um, and that's where I was exposed to all of these, you know, companies that had their logos in the business building, right? Procter & Gamble being one of them. And so, um, and they still have that wall. If you, if you ever visit Florida A&M's campus, their school of business have a, has a wall of just corporate companies that come to the university and recruit. And so, um, and so I see this company called P&G, I don't know much about them, um, but I see that they're coming on campus to interview students. And so uh, back then, you know, you had to sign the piece of paper, <laughs> right, to sign up. When I go to sign up, there's no more interview slots. And so, um, but I'm curious about this company. I do a little research and I find out they own all of these brands. I don't know the company, but we all know the brands, Tide and Crest and Nike, all of these big brands. And so, um, and so long story short, I don't get a chance to interview them, but I get a chance to talk to the, uh, the, the, the P&G rep as they're walking out of the interview room. So I'm there, resume, the only sports coat I own. I hand them a resume. I said, my, you know, my name is Brian Rice. I'm a senior designer. I go through the spiel, right? And it's like, I'm really curious about whether you guys have a, a design group or a creative group that does your work. And, uh, and so that chance encounter actually turned out to be a 30 minute conversation. And so it just so happened that this person knew a lot about the design department and they were like, well, sit down, let me tell you about it. So wow. give, them, give them the resume. Uh, I get a call back uh, a couple of months later and, um, and lo and behold, I find myself interviewing in Cincinnati for an entry level job with P&G, right? Now call it luck, fate, uh, 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 you know, a touch from up above. <laughs> I don't know, Lucas, but to this day, I'm very well, appreciative of, of, of that, right? I have to say something about that real quick. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I want to say that yeah. just goes to show you like 90% of anything is just showing up, you know, exactly. being there, being ready for the moment. Uh, right. I know now in this particular day and age too, we're kind of separated, obviously, and showing up is a lot more difficult, but we can still do it through things like this and the, the communication that Amy showed us a little earlier, reach out to people. It doesn't, you never know what's going to happen and it really does make a big difference. Um, and I'm, so that's really awesome to hear that that's how it worked out for you. You know, it's, right. uh, it's putting yourself out there. Absolutely. Back in the day, you had to put yourself out there. It wasn't like I could necessarily text someone or what have you, right? I literally 
I literally had to find someone, right, to, to actually kind of, you know, kind of talk to and just be curious, right? Be yeah. curious about what, what might be available. And so, um, and so I get the job at PNG. It's a uh, it's an entry level design manager role, right? And so, remember, I'm thinking like, okay, I'll get into an agency, I'll work my way up the ladder, maybe I'll own my own. As, as I thought about that job, it's like I get to do all of those things, but I don't get to pay the bills. <laughs> so I get to manage a business, and so I jumped in managing kind of one of their um, you know multi billion dollar healthcare kind of categories and so brands like Crest and, yeah. <laughs> and, and you know and all of those things and they did a really good job because I was the first that they hired directly out of out of college so in their design function it was experienced hires and so um, and so they wanted you to have five to seven I was a bit of an experiment to say hey can we take someone straight out of school and just teach them yeah. and uh, and boy did they I mean I had a, a, an amazing career at PNG, and you'll find that I, I made a return trip, but but amazing, you know, four and a half, five year career, and so really loved the job, Cincinnati, eh, but loved the job. Ryan, so, <laughs> you know that's my hometown. I know. Eh, I grew up in Florida, Disney, yeah. right? Okay, you know? fair, 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 fair. And, and so, um, but I did make a return trip, and 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 there's a a happy ending to the Cincinnati story. And so, um, and, but I get a call from a recruiter, one of those days that I'm listening, and they said, there's a little soft drink company in Atlanta that is trying to grow their design department. Would you be interested? And I'm thinking, little soft drink company? I wonder if they're talking about Coke, <laughs> you know? <laughs> sure enough, it was Coca-Cola. And, so, um, and so I talked to the recruiter, you know, they arranged for me to come down and meet, uh, uh, meet the leaders of the organization. Um, it's kind of another tick up, right? So now I'm working on a global, a much more global business, traveling all around the world. And they give me like two of the coolest brands in the entire portfolio, Sprite and uh, Powerade. And so I'm working on like, wow, these are, and so I'm kind of in the target range. And so it doesn't feel like work at all. I know Atlanta because I went to school in Tallahassee and we used to come up here. So it was kind of like one of those, one of those, you know, kind of amazing kind of, you know, uh, opportunities that I couldn't say no to. Right. And so called my mentor, called my, called everybody's like, Hey, what do you think about this opportunity? And, and, um, and, and wind up going. And while at, uh, while at Coca-Cola, I start to get a taste of, of not just, you know, designing globally, and working with you know markets around the world and just very intelligent uh, uh, marketers, but uh, I'm also getting a taste of of managing people, right? And yeah. managing, and so I had managed agencies and 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 external creatives and things like that. But now it's like people management, like I'm responsible for someone's career, right? Other than the intern, right? And so and so I'm getting a taste of that. And I kind of like that, you know, just kind of playing that role of mentor and coach. Uh, and, and, and manager. And so that's, that's interesting, Brian, before yeah. you jump, uh, I, I love yeah. these stories. There's like so many yeah. things I want to uh, stop you and talk to you. Sure, about. Sure. 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 Yep. Uh, uh, you know, now you're becoming a mentor and inspiring people. Mm -hmm. I was wondering if you could go back in time just for a moment and talk a little bit about how the mentors that you had during the time, uh, at Procter and Gamble helped you achieve that next goal or how did you yep. uh, communicate with them when you were getting these offers? Yeah, so, I've, so, you know, if you're in a company, you know, sometimes they have a very kind of uh, formal mentoring program, right? So yeah. they take the, you know, the rookies, you know, in the company, they connect you with leaders within the organization, right? And kind of help you navigate, right? You know, navigate the organization. I've always had mentors inside the company and outside the company, right? Okay. And so they give you that, you know, those, those two perspectives that you can balance. And so anything from, you know, a career shift, uh, a, a job shift, right? A, um, you know, like, should I take this assignment? Um, but also just sharing knowledge, right? And so they know stuff that you just don't know. Yeah. And, and in fact, you know, I find that really good mentors will help you think of the question that you should have asked, <laughs> right? That you didn't, right? Yeah. And so it's like, they, they help you figure out what you, what you actually don't know, right? And so really good mentors kind of have played that role. It's like, Brian, this is the question you actually should ask, 
right? And so not necessarily being the one that provides the answer, right? And so they kind of like, go look over there and go look over there. And I have made that mistake candidly that, you know, thinking that I need to be the one, if I'm a mentor for someone, that I need to be, be the one to have all the answers. Actually, some mentors don't. They, they have like, did you think of this? Did you think of that? Did you think of that, right? Help you think through the alternatives. So guess what, Lucas, so that you can make the decision, right? Because that's what it's about, right? Empowerment, yeah. Exactly. And so, you know, again, they, they, they pat you on the back and, 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 and give you that boost of confidence when you, when you need it, right? They'll, they'll tell you where your shortcomings are. It's like, hey, hey you need to get better at this, right? That's you need to, need to think about those things. And so it's a very balanced, balanced piece. But before I left P&G and accepted the job at Coke, I definitely talked to some people inside the company, you know, that I was leaving. And even, um, and even you know, my, my, my personal kind of board of advisors, if you will, outside the company to, to help you weigh, weigh the pros and cons, right? Are you, are, you, are you running into an opportunity or running away from something, right? You know, it's those kinds of conversations that I think a really good mentor can, can help with. That's a really good point. And having, I like the idea of, you know, you said Procter & Gamble, they offer you here, look, we're going to show you the ropes. This is what we have. But having that outside advisor board is just as important too, to get that, um, different perspective, I think that you're saying, which I think is great. And uh, if you could, if you yeah. have any examples of how you met potentially one of your outside yeah. of, right, is it like family, yeah. extended family, friends of family, or was it just like you ran into them when you were in college and like, that's a person you talk to now? You know, it's, Lucas, it's, it's all of that. You know, I don't yeah. think it's any, any one thing, but one of the things when I have looked uh, for a mentor, either in a company or externally, I've always thought about, like, what is it that I want to use that mentor for, right? And so, you know, I could say, okay, I, I, I want a mentor to be better. Well, double click on that. Be better at what, right? Yeah. A better communicator, right? A better influencer, a better designer, a be like you gotta get really specific so that you know what you're looking for, right? And so, um, and so I've always kind of, you know, coach mentees or, or mentors, right? Like really get clear about what it is that you're looking for. And then I often think about like, okay, who do I know in my, my sphere, right? Yeah. And so friends, family, that kind of thing. My very first mentor was a friend of, uh, of my mom's, right? Okay. And so I, I, I knew him, I knew what he did. And so I, I, you know, I kind of leaned in toward, ask him questions about this, like, how'd you do that? And you know, th those kinds of things. And they don't necessarily need to be in design, right? Yeah. Many of my mentors are actually out of design. Right. And so they just share a perspective that's that's unique that will help you help you kind of grow. And so I always think about, you know, like, OK, who do I know? Because I might know um, I might know Warren Buffett, but he doesn't know me. So there's no way if I wanted financial investor, you, you know, kind of if it's going to it's going to connect. Right. But I know someone who's good at finance. And I can talk to that person, right, and start to start to figure out what I don't know or what I need to learn, right, which then leads you to the next. And, and as I said, sometimes good mentors would say, well, I don't know the answer to that question, but I know someone who does. It's like, let me introduce you to such and such, right? Right. And then as a mentee, right, you got to follow up on that, right? Yeah. And so you got to make sure that you reach out to that person, say, hey, this person told me to contact you because they thought you might have some some advice, right? Yeah. Um, and, and one of the things that, 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 that I often kind of say is, um, and I never really said, ask someone, it's like, I never said, Lucas, would you be my mentor, right? Like yeah, I, okay, that's good. Yeah. I, I never said those words. Um, because sometimes what happens is that when you put that label on it, it becomes formal, right? Like, oh, like mentor. So that means you need an hour a week, you know, three times, I'm doing the math is like, can I actually mentor you, right? Because yeah. I don't want to disappoint you, right? And so often what I would do is I would, I would say something like, do you mind if I give you a call for just some advice on stuff like this? And chances are they'd say, yeah, right? More often than not, they say, yeah, right? But if I say, hey, would you be my mentor? Now it becomes like there's a 50-50 chance it could go one way or the other, right? Because they could say, yeah, I don't really true. have the time commitment, right? Because they don't want to disappoint. I think that that's a good point. Uh you know, when it comes to mentor, putting a label on it and that kind of making it more formal causes more tension. It just becomes a thing that's a lot bigger than maybe it even needs to be because 
that right. conversation can lead to you talking to somebody else that could lead to whatever that is. And that's part of the mentorship in general is right. asking questions, expanding. That's, that's really right. awesome. That's uh, right. And so you kind of take that approach of, you know, just kind of, you know, figuring out like how this person might be able to help you kind of grow your skills again, help you learn what you don't, what you don't know, th those kinds of things. And I never really put a label on it. I mean, I think there would be some people who might say, yeah, yeah, I'm Brian's mentor, but many of them probably don't know. They probably don't know that they are quote unquote, my mentor. Right. And, yeah. and, and I think that's the beauty of it. Right. Because then it becomes a, a trusting relationship, very, very personal. Right. They yeah. kind of know me. Right. They kind of, you know, they're honest with me and say, you know, hey, you need to do these things or, or, or and not those things. Right. And so it just organically happens. Right. And yeah, so take a lot um, of pressure off, too, right. of it being like, oh, I have to get Brian this job or I have That's to. Right. Do this. It's like I'm here just to give you perspective and help you understand that. Uh, there are different ways and outlets and here's options for you. Giving options is, is a big part, it seems. So. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. And so that's kind of the approach that I've kind of, I've taken with it. Yeah. Um, and, and many of them I still talk to, right? Might use them for different things as your, as your life stage changes, right? Mm -hmm. uh, which is another point, which is, I think, you know, I think whether you're early in your career or later in your career, it's good to have mentors, right? Yeah. There, there yeah. are new things that you will counter as like, uh, an adult, a parent now, you, you know, all of those things that are very different when, you know, when you're just trying to figure out like, you know, okay, what does this mean? <laughs> you, you know? That's and another so, really good point. Yeah. Mentorship through the whole through. trajectory of career path. I was reading or listening. I can't remember the exact source um, about how uh, once you go further into your career, learning how uh, the new age and generation is doing stuff is just as important as when you're first starting and trying to figure out how you got there. So like, right. that's where you get, share the knowledge. And I think that's great to always keep those, those doors open like that. That's absolutely. Awesome. Absolutely. So, you know, I'm thinking about, so now, you know, I'm, I'm, you, you know, um, thinking about a leave from Coca-Cola and, um, and I do what every designer does, right? Like change it all up. Right. And so I get married, I have a kid and I move everyone out of Atlanta and move uh, to a little town in uh, Southern Indiana, Evansville. And so um, a wonderful, wonderful experience. And I joined Bristol Myers Squibb. Um, again, increasing responsibility, more people to manage, all of, you know, all of those things. Um, and uh, and took, uh, took, took that job, stayed there about three, three and a half years. And, um, and I, I get a call from a previous employer, P&G, right? And so by this point, about nine and a half, 10 years has, um, you, you know, has gone by since I last left the organization. So when I leave the organization, um, I, I forget when it was, but when I leave them, it's like 35, you know, kind of design managers soaking wet, right, globally, right? I'm watching the transformation of design through the organization, right? And now they're about 250 and growing. <laughs> wow. And so, um, and so I, um, I, I have a meeting with, uh, with leadership at, at P&G and I get offered a job to come back. And so, um, and so Sam, to, to the earlier point, very different city with a family, right? Family oriented kind of stuff. It was perfect in terms of my, my life stage and kind of where I was. And so I packed the troops up. I go back to uh, go back to Cincinnati to, you know, a familiar place, but very different. Design is like, you, you know, kind of taking off on the cover of Fast Company Business Week. Design is like, you, you know, the capability, the business, you know, the, the area you want to be in in the organization. And so um, and that was an attraction, you know, kind of to come back. Great company, all of those all of those things and um, and led their um, global fabric care business. Um, um, both here in North America and then also outside. I'm more responsibilities in terms of uh, leadership opportunities, managing people, growing teams, um, and did that uh, for about uh, about eight years. Launched a lot of successful products, Tide Pods, Downy Unstoppables. Uh, yeah, I mean, you you name it across the the fabric care franchise, and just you know, again, working with some of the amazing marketers and product developers and R and Ds, and just being exposed to just so much more, you know, um, than um, than than pre than I previously did. And so, um, and so did that for eight years. Um, and then um, once again, get one of those calls, <laughs> right? 
That, All right, well, let me hold you off real quick. Yeah, I, I, you can do eight years there. I want to talk a little yeah, bit about the eight sure. years. <laughs> yes, let's do that. Uh, it's very cool. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's amazing. I mean, it seems also mm -hmm. through your particular career path, you've kind of yeah. always been almost in the managing position from day yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. You know, you started with a team of 10, but then you're talking now about a team of 100 plus. So, I mean, there wasn't particularly maybe a point where you switched from exactly designing, but you were talking about in college how you loved design and that was something of really interest to you. Yes. So when you started practicing, did you kind of just start off by your job need more insp inspiration focused or were you still designing? And what point did that kind of shift? Yeah, well, it obviously shifted at Proctor when I left school, right? Like, a, you, yeah. you know, design management then yeah. <laughs> meant something very different than it means now, right? And so, you know, at school, I mean, they train you to be a designer, right? Yes. How, yeah. how, to, how, to, how to think, how to create, how to communicate, you know, all of those kind of basic things. But when I joined Proctor, I had to learn a whole new skill set, right? In that I'm not really doing the designing, mm -hmm. but I need to inspire an agency to deliver on an objective, right? That's set by the business. So how do I do that without coming up with the solution? <laughs> you know? Yeah, that's a... And so, I, you know, I remember, um, you know, many of the, you know, probably the first year, you know, kind of sketching stuff and like, just do this, right? Like sketching to do this. And, and you have one of those heart to heart conversations with your managers, like, that's not really your job, right? Your job is to help them to get to the solution, right? Versus doing it and just having them execute it, right? The role was different, right? And so I learned, you know, within the organization, how to how to become a manager of design, right? Yeah. Versus the designer. Now, um, did I roll up my sleeves every now and again and, and get involved in it? Yes, it's natural. It's natural for designers. I, I do it now, right? Um, maybe crazy. sometimes to the chagrin of, of my former team, right? But it's a natural instinct, right? That, you know, that you, that you, you know, you can't help but, but do. And, and, and as long as you are respectful with it, right? You know, i.e. like, hey, I'm trying to communicate an idea, but the reason I hired you is for you to come up with a better, a better one. And so that creating versus inspiring, I think I, I think I do both. Right. Um, yeah. I just do it. I just do it differently. Right. And if that's motivating a team that, you know, that there might be another solution out there. Um, or helping them come up with an idea or or or, or high fiving when it yeah. goes great or inspiring differently, like, hey, I think we can do this better, you know? Yeah. I think they, they kind of, for me at least, they kind of move back and, back and forth. That's interesting, yeah. I mean, when you're inspiring, it's a, it's a form of critiquing, you know, you're trying to get people to do better or to show mm -hmm. different paths. Um, yeah. Is there any kind of prof part of that process? I mean, you are talking too about kind of bringing it down, uh, like connecting high five, like, we're, yeah. we're a team here. It's not about making you, uh, yeah. you're not doing good, like do it better. So is right. there, what are some of those other processes in critiquing that you, you use? You know, I always start with asking a lot of questions and I, I think most of my team would do that. Right. And you know, like we, we designers do like, why, right. Why, like, why, like, why, you know, and, um, and, and trying to get at that, right. Like really trying to get at what's behind it. Right. And if, you know, if I'm working with a designer or a design manager, design leader that has a, they have, they have a solid reason why, then my role is a little different. Then I turn to the, okay, let me, let's pressure test it. Right. And so let me, let's figure out what we think maybe, what would the, what would the R and D person say about this? Right. What would, um, what would the procurement person say about this? What would the brand say about this, right? And so it becomes, you know, it be the, the dialogue changes from me, right, trying to come up with the solution to me helping that design manager, that design leader make it even stronger yeah. by asking those questions, right? Sharing maybe a different perspective, right? Almost kind of making it, I don't want to say airtight, but at least thinking about like, okay, where, where some of the gaps might be or where some of the opportunities might be um, and, and just kind of pressure testing it that way, right? Um, and then getting, and, and, and honestly, Lucas, when you have a talented team, which I've, which I've had, you, you get the hell out of the way as the leader, right? Yeah. <laughs> Your job is really to move all the obstacles, right? Yeah. You, you know, that, that, that are in the organization so that people can do their very best work, right? How can, how can I create the conditions, right? for them to, 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 to do what they, what they love to do. 
And so just kind of knowing that that's where I can, where I could add the most value yeah. is kind of what became um, more rewarding for me than the actual, than the actual artifact, than the actual thing, right? It became that's more awesome. about, you yeah. know, how, how do I help that person kind of really get strong at what they're trying to do? That's great. Yeah. I mean, it's, I can imagine like from my perspective too, uh, from being such a creative and doing a design mm -hmm. constantly to slowly transitioning into the manager state, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. it's tough letting go of stuff too. But yeah. once you let go of what you're saying too, and kind of, it's more, it's not about me creating, it's about us okay. getting the best thing out. Uh, and yeah. going back to design thinking, we haven't gotten there quite yet, but, yeah. uh, yeah. Yeah. One of the bigger pro parts of design thinking is iteration and testing. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. you asking these questions is pushing people uh, yes. to think about things more than just like, well, I like yeah. blue. I mean, like blue's great, you know, right. uh, right. it's their right. color. Why not? Um, right. so that's right. great. That's really good. Yeah. And I think, you know, that's, that's a, you know, that's a tough crossroads. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's not, um, it's, and it's not for everyone. Yeah. There are some brilliant designers out there that have no interest in managing people. And guess what? That's okay, right? Yeah. And then you have just the opposite. You have some brilliant designers, right? Who actually wanna manage people, right? And guess what? That's okay too, right? Yeah. But kind of knowing, you know, kind of, you, you know, kind of which, which direction or both directions is, is really important. And, you know, I've, I've always coached, uh, you, know, you know, kind of design managers, people that are thinking about it, it's like, okay, what's a low risk way that we can experiment with it to see if you really would like it, right? Yeah. And, yeah. Um, and, and that comes in the forms of, um, is, there, is there someone that you can mentor on the team, right? Um, you know, um, hey, hey, maybe you manage our summer interns, right? Get a taste of, you know, of, of, of real life people problems, right? Yeah. You, you know, what, what to do when someone is sick and they have to leave, but you got to get work done, right? Those are real life people, you know, kind of things that um, aren't for everyone, right? You know, and, um, and, and if we're honest with ourselves, right? Um, I think as you, as you move up the, the, the organization, at least what I've learned is that it's much more about the people, right? That, that's the piece of it. It's back to the, how do I create the conditions where everyone can, can be their best self, right? Can, can, can Feel really be fulfilled. Yeah, yeah, finding the right positions. That's kind Absolutely. of, I had another Absolutely. question I was thinking about uh, uh, when you were talking and it was like, um, when you're evaluating designers, is there a particular skill you look for, yeah. right? Like, okay, this yeah. guy, he's, yeah. he's okay at designing, but he's really good at getting people together. Maybe he needs sure. to be more of the manager. And like, yeah. is that when you kind, of, you kind of evaluate people and kind of put them on career paths? Is that part of your job as well? Well, I do a couple of things. I mean, obviously, you know, in, in evaluating designers and the role that they might play within, you know, within the team or what have you, you know, I look for, look for a couple of things, right? Obvious, the design, you know, with the work that we do, you can see whether someone has talent or not, right? Yeah. We have a portfolio, whether digital, whatever, right? Like you yeah. can see it, right? That's very different in, in other, uh, other careers, right? Like, how, you know, um, how do I know if you're a, a great scientist? Like, I, like, I don't personally, I don't know how to measure that, right? Like, you, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And so, but at least with our work, right? Like you can see it, right? Like, this is what yeah. I created and this is what I did, you know? And so you got it, that's gotta be the baseline, right? Do they have strong design skills, right? Creative skills, you know, that kind of thing. Um, I also look for um, um, good communicators, right? Yeah. Now, I, I look for people who could express an idea. I'm not looking for an orator, right? I'm not yeah. looking for someone who can do a, necessarily a TED talk. That's great if they can, but that's not what I mean. It's like, do you have the ability to express an idea? Whatever that is, right? And yeah. so, and, and that's with the most junior people and even the most, you know, kind of most senior people, right? I kind of, I kind of look for, the, for those things, right? And then the other thing I kind of look for is passion. Let's say your design skills are okay, Let's say your communication skills are okay, right? But you're passionate about whatever it is. I tend to lean in the passion, right? Because that's something I feel that you can't necessarily develop in someone, right? I think either you got it or you're not. Either you're, 
either you get excited about things or you don't, right? I can't make you get, you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I do know what you're saying. That is interesting. I can, I can refine maybe your design skills, right? Or someone on the team can do that, right? We can work on the communication stuff. But the passion piece, right? That's oftentimes what separates, right? What separates, right? The good ones from the great ones, right? And so just ensuring, right, that that, you know, again, you can kind of see that passion come out, you know, when they're talking about a, a subject, you can see that, you know, the, 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 the lights in their eyes, yeah, you know, they yeah. kind of get excited about that, right? Um, and then sometimes as a leader, you might have to nudge them a little bit. It's like, I actually think you'd be great at managing people, right? Yeah. Or I actually think you might be good at, you know, at good at that. Would you, would you want to try something like that, right? Yeah. And so, you, you know, and, and it's a, as a leader, it's a lot of asking, right? Tell me what you're interested in it. Why are you interested in it, right? Like, like what, would it, what would it look like if it were like the dream job? You know, those, those kinds of things, right? And as a manager, you do your best you can to kind of set them up in a situation, right? Even if it means that you have to coach someone out of your group, right? It's like, what you actually want to do, we don't have it here, but they have it in, it, they have it in that department, and so, hey, you might want to talk to the leader in that department. I can make a introduction. And if you want to be a researcher, then we can make that happen, right? And That's so, a really good point, too, as a leader, kind of, again, back to the career path and mentor and uh, helping people find their correct path uh, right. by being able to properly gauge their skills right. and their, what they're do they fit the role? If they, if they don't, that doesn't mean they have to go. We have to find what fits for them or because they're really skilled in something and finding that skill is awesome. And hearing you say that is really And, and I think the, the only thing I would add, Lucas, is, is that, you know, fit, you got to be careful with fit too, right? It's kind of um, like, do they have the potential to do it, right? Do they have, do you see enough signals that, oh, they, they could probably do this, right? And can you put them in a situation, a low risk situation, right? Where they can grow it and develop, you know, that, that kind of thing. That's important too, right? Yeah. Um, and, and certainly in this day and age, right? You know, as we think about, you know, do you, does a person fit this or fit that? Well, who defines fit? That's a very good point. Yeah, fit so, is the wrong word. Yeah, no, no, I, but but I, but I'm but what I'm saying is is that sometimes as a leader, you, you have to kind of think about like stretching it beyond. It's like this person is really good at doing these kinds of things, and if you're in tune to it, it's like, hey, do you mind facilitating this group? I think you'd be great at doing that, right? You don't real sometimes you don't realize it, right? Yeah, you know that 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 you're really good at something until someone kind of points it out. Back to the mentors, right? Yeah, back to the mentors. Yeah, exactly, the, it sounds right. Kind of, they point those things out that maybe you can't necessarily see that maybe maybe you can, you know, kind of create and drive some value with it. And so. Well, that brings us kind of to our last phase of what we're talking about, yeah, sure, about sure. Kind of, uh, applying design thinking and like, yeah. okay, so we're talking about you helping people find their career paths. We talk yeah. about helping you get your career path going. Um, yeah. But when you're in a company too, and there's certain roadblocks that you have to face, oh, sure. how do you how do yeah. you navigate that? How how do you use design thinking potentially to help you get where you need to go or your team? Well, you know, it's um, and so design thinking again buzzword now. Everyone's yeah. kind of using it, which is great. I mean, it's great for. I think the industry, right? We just need to make sure that, you know, as design leaders and designers and practitioners that, you know, we, 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 we shape the narrative about it, right? You know, in terms of what it is, right? And yeah. kind of making sure that, that people, people understand it, right? And not just, just using the, the bud word. Um, obviously, many, many designers were exposed to it, you know, in, in school, right? They probably didn't call it design thinking, right? But they, they showed us how to solve a problem, right? First, you got to observe and understand it, right? And, and then you got to figure out like, okay, what are, what, are, what are the potential alternatives to those, right? You, you, you kind of test those, those alternatives, right? Yeah. Um, and, and then you prototype them and you back up and you test them again and you do all of those things. It's no different when you are in a situation kind of within a company and trying to navigate through a team, right? So why does that, why does that team think this way about us? right? Whatever that uh, obstacle might be, right? And so I got to kind of go in and kind of understand that, right? Like, what are some of the empathetic things that I can do to understand what's driving the behavior and why they do what they do, right? Yeah. And sometimes, you know, we, we skip over that part, right? We just go to the, they don't like us because they think we're expensive, they lead us and oh, blah, 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 right? And so, um, and so we, we, we have to go in as, as designers, right? Figure out what the, what the problem is, what the opportunity is, what, what the need is, right? And you may find out, it's like, oh, the reason why they do what they do is because they're rewarded like this. 
that drives the behavior, right? And so if you go in and acknowledge that, like, oh, that's what the driver is, how can, how can we create something that gets you what you need and me what I need, right? Who wouldn't want to sign up for that, right? right. It may take a couple conversations, right? But generally speaking, right, you can, you can approach it like a design problem, right? And then you can create, okay, these are all the alternatives, right? I'd be interested in, you know, kind of understanding what your alternatives are. Like, how can we quickly test these and figure out which one we want to move forward with, right? Right? We, we iterate on it a little bit, right? We test it a little bit more, right? All of, this, all of the same skills, right, that we learned in, in, uh, in design school or, you know, kind of what we learned way back when. The only difference is it's not a thing. It's yeah. not an artifact, right? It might be a process. It might be an approach. It might be a... It might be a strategy, right? It might be, you know, all of those things, right? And so just helping kind of to, 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 to kind of think about it as if it were a design project has kind of, it's kind of helped me kind of, you know, kind of navigate those, right? And, uh, and sometimes you get it right. And sometimes you, you, you know, you got to prototype it again and iterate again, right? And, you know, you know, the, this notion of failing fast, right? You, you got, you know, you got to do all of those things, right? Much like you would with, with any design project, right? That's really good. The empathy is the core to the design thinking uh, away from the buzzword. It really is about kind of understanding what's working with both people and not just separating. Like it's not our team versus their team. Well, we're designers and the account can never understand us or something. It's like, no, we're trying to achieve the same thing. Why are they doing this? That's affecting us this way. Sure. Yep. Bridging that gap uh, right. is very interesting. It's back, yeah. It's back to those why questions that we ask. Right, mm -hmm. curiosity, the natural curiosity, like why did why why is it done that way, right? You know, and yeah. like what would happen if you didn't do this, right? You know, you're kind of prototyping and iterating in the conversation, right? Yeah. Like, oh, so 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 nothing would happen if we took that step away or if we didn't do that, you know? Yeah. And so sometimes it's a it's uh, what I find is that it's uh, uh it's illuminating for the person on the other side, right? Yeah. They're kind of like, yeah, wh why do we do this, <laughs> you know? Or why hasn't this occurred, right? You know, it's, it's those kinds of things that come up with the natural approach that designers kind of take to solving problems. That's really good, yeah. It's, um, it's hard to do too, yeah. you know, when you're faced with a manager or somebody yeah. that is above you, above your pay grade, and yeah. you're trying to communicate and figure out uh, mm -hmm. how to bridge a gap that you see, uh, but what you're talking about by asking questions and approaching it empathetic, empathetically it seems yeah. and really does make a difference it's like right. you can you can get to a mutual understanding and reach right. the goal by doing that it doesn't have to be um as competitive uh, i think as it has been in the past i've, I've heard and seen mm -hmm. uh, which i really like the approach that way i think i mean i and i think you guys have experienced this too you, yeah. you know design is a team sport right yeah and uh we we need we need the other groups as much as they need us right um, but, but we're often, believe it or not, the connectors, <laughs> like we, we are connecting kind of the, the dots. And I think sometimes we forget is that, um, not that we we're different, better or special or any of that kind of stuff is, is that we see it and we forget that other people can't necessarily see what we see. Right. And so it's back to that, you know, like, okay, well, how do I communicate it in a way, right. That helps the other person kind of understand it, right? I always take the approach, look in the mirror, it's like, okay, maybe I didn't say that the best way, right? Or maybe, maybe I'll try it this way, right? And, and it's back to prototyping, iterating, yeah. all of, right? Yeah, exactly. It's all of those things, right? And so, um, and if you're interested in that kind of journey, right? You, you, you know, that's, that's what it's all about, right? You know, in terms, yeah. of, in terms of making things happen. Taking it past just design again and yep, taking yep. it into the people is, uh, it's a people yep. thing, you know, connecting to people, that's what the designs are for. So it's, yep. it's good to reiterate that. Uh, and we're not all perfect, no one's perfect, but no, connecting no. and figuring it out that this is the way we do it. We talk about it, we question each other and we move sure. forward that way. That's the only way and not uh, make assumptions and uh, block out options like that. That's right, so. that's right. And, and it's really suspending, um, your personal point of view, as long as you can, right? Like you kind of, you know, it's like, I got to listen to all of these perspectives. And, and before I weigh it, I want to make sure that I, that I got it, right? And that's, that's tough to do, right? Tough. Right? Because trust me, designers do have a point of view, right? Yeah. And so, right? And so like, how, how can you suspend that point of view 
to maybe learn that there's another way to do it, right? And it may not be my, you know, it may not be my answer or your answer. Maybe it's a different answer, right? Uh-huh. And I think we, I think we are uniquely positioned to kind of play that role, right? Uh, when we, when we need to. Yeah, it's yeah. Uh, you know going to school, mm-hmm. you're kind of always taught too to like defend your your thing. Yeah. You design yeah. something, you defend it. And this is why I did it, yeah. and those are all really good points. Right. But it, it, it like to your point, mm-hmm. what you're saying, it's it's not necessarily when you're in the real world about your specific needs either. It's a group right. collective needs yeah. that you got to address. And that's really where uh, you shine is by connecting all those dots. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I just, I wanted to hop in really fast because I have yeah. a lot of experience with design thinking. I was introduced yeah. to it, you know, at P&G when I was an intern. And so yeah. I ended up doing my senior capstone on design thinking for programming and student organizations on campus. Sure. Um, because you have so many different perspectives and different types of people coming together to do that. So it was taking a lot of these, um, these insights and, and trying to understand how you can use them to, to make good decisions. But really, yeah. I think the great thing about design thinking is that you kind of have to leave your ego at the door. Oh, it's about sure. focusing on the insights, right? It's about figuring out what's the best solution for whomever sure. you know, the, the target is, whether it's a group, an, an organization, or a specific consumer. Um, and it really helps disarm all of the people um, and making sure that nobody holds like their particular idea dear yeah, and letting oh, that go and focusing on, you know, solving what the problem is. That's right. That's right. Suspending judgment. Right. And it's unfortunate, at least when I was in, in school many, many moons ago, um, you know, it's like you get the assignment. Everybody went over in their dark cave. They kind of did what they yeah. did. And then it was this grand reveal. Right. Yeah. And it's like, no, like, why were we doing it like that, right? Right. And so, you know, as I think about this collaboration that naturally needs to happen, right, to make even my germ of an idea that much better if I talk to this person, if I talk to that person, right, the idea gets better, as mm-hmm. opposed to kind of how they taught us, which was, you know, cover it up, yeah. and to your point, Lucas, then reveal, right, and yeah. end it, and all of those things. And I, I think with, you know, w- w- with what has happened in, you know, in our society and what has happened, COVID is kind of teaching us all kinds of things, like yeah. things like this and being able to do this. That's where it's going, right? Mm-hmm. No one person can do it, right? You know, and so it d- does truly take, you know, kind of take a village, right? To, to, to kind of get to meaningful solutions that make a difference in people's lives. Um, so I'm going to interrupt since I'm like the tech lead today, (laughs) assisting Lucas in the conversation. No, we've got about eight minutes left now, and we do have a couple questions in the chat. Mostly, um, I think folks are looking for some advice, you know, if if they're just starting out, you Mm -hmm. know, fresh out of college, these are crazy times. What advice would you give? Um, network, 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 right? I think, um, there, there are, and this is a crazy time, right? There are many more opportunities out there that are actually um, displayed, right? Showcased, right? That online, right? And what I've found is just the tremendous amount of uh, the importance back to that networking and mentoring thing, right? And so going to those, you know, kind of to those, um, those trusted networks, right? And, and having conversations about like, hey, I'm interested in doing something like this. Do you know anybody that, you know, that has something, you know, kind of like this, right? And so it's about, the, you know, it's about, you know, kind of, you know, taking advantage that the networks that you have established. Now, if you're new, you're probably saying, well, I don't really have a big network, right? And so what do you do? You join organizations like AIGA, right? Yeah, it's like uh, perfect plug. Right? Yeah. It's like, yeah. hey, 56 of your newfound friends, right? Yeah. On this call, right? <laughs> And so like connecting that way, networking, you know, kind of having a conversation, right? Helping people to understand kind of what, um, uh, what you're interested in doing and, and what may be out there, right? Yeah. Um, I read a stat and Amy probably knows it better than me, the number of jobs that are available that are not, uh, what percentage of jobs that are out there, career opportunities that are out there that are never posted, that come from um, back to the who knows you, right? right. Not who you know, right? Who knows you, right? Uh, which is a which is a distinct difference, right? And so, um, and oh, she so she said it's like sixty percent. Exactly, right? Who would have thought, 
right? Uh -huh. So there's another 50% that's out there that we don't even see and know about, right? That's huge, right? Yeah. And so that, that, is, that is important, right? And so I would say network, 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 start building kind of your, you know, kind of your, your circle of, of contacts kind of thing. LinkedIn is a great, you know, if you guys aren't on it, you, you need to be on it, right? It's a great, you know, kind of great tool um, um, to, to, to use to kind of make connections. I, you know, I've, uh, I've attended a webinar. I may have heard a comment that maybe a speaker made and I shot him a note, say, hey, I'd love to learn more about this comment that you made, right? Do you mind setting up 15 minutes for a quick chat about it, right? And of course, 15 turns into 30. And if you're lucky, it's 45, right? You know, that you, again, make the, make the connection there. And so, and so that's a way that, that, I mean, something, a piece of advice that I would ask in these times, because I, I think that's going to be critically important in times like this. And another good note that you had mentioned a little earlier, I just want to reiterate and bring back to light is just um, kind of knowing what you want to when you reach out. It's, yeah. it's not yeah. just, oh, well, I'm just connecting with this guy because he's a creator. Yes. Director. I hope that right. works. Like, it's like, yeah. I, this guy did this really cool thing. I want to talk to him about that. That's, that's, that's right. how you approach it. I yeah, that's yeah, that, that helps. I mean, the blind LinkedIn connection request, you know, you may get a, a response or not, but I think if you can be uh, more specific, right? Yeah. You know, I think that's where it becomes a bit more back to that personal piece of it. It's a bit yeah. more personal, right? And so I'm vested in it because you hung on to, you know, a, a sentence I used or whatever I might have said, right? And, uh, you know, and being able to impart some knowledge, right? And so, so yeah. Very cool. Great question. Great question. Great. Um, we only have a couple minutes left, so yeah. we'll see how many we can get in. But the next one, um, any advice that you have for encouraging design thinking in a department or organization? Any advice? Um, read it again. Yeah. Do you have any advice for how to encourage design thinking in a department or organization? Um, role model it. So meaning that as, as a design team, design or, you know, org, that you do it, you practice, right? You, you kind of do it, right? And so my, my advice would be, you, you know, kind of find those, uh, you know, find those low, low risk situations where you can display it and, and show it. Um, and sometimes that may mean, um, and I've done this, a couple of folks, uh, I, I know that some of my colleagues are on the, on the chat here, but that might look like actually doing it and then telling them what we just did, yeah. right? And so you go through a couple of things and then you back up. It's like, hey, you know, guys, what we just did is a framework that I learned way back when, right, which is really around kind of creative problem solving. And so we went through three of the five steps. Are you interested in learning the other two? Because you just did three, right? And so right. you're in, right? Yeah. You're in, right? And so I think, you know, as an organization, you got to role model, model it when you can find some advocates and bring them in you know, into it. Um, I was having a conversation earlier today. Sometimes the best salespeople for design thinking are not designers. It's people who have experienced it. And was like, I don't know what they just did, but you ought to go try it out, right? You know, it's that word of mouth, you know, kind of thing. Um, a lot of times that, that, that goes over much, uh, much stronger than, you know, an 18 page PowerPoint deck, right? And so, because people remember stories. They don't remember the PowerPoint deck, right? right? And so someone can tell them, you know, this is how I felt after the end of it, right? And this is kind of what we did. That story kind of sticks more so than, you know, the keynote presentation. Makes sense. Perfect. Helpful? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah everybody, everybody nodding? Yeah. <laughs> Good stuff. Good stuff. Um, okay, two minutes left. I, the, yes. the next one I'll ask you, there, there's just a question about how you select external vendors or partners? What do you look for in mm -hmm. agencies? Yeah, I, I look for a lot of the same thing that the company looks for um, in its employees, right? And so, um, and so whatever that, you know, kind of whatever those kind of, you know, kind of values and beliefs and things like that, that the company looks for in employees, you know, I would, I would want our agency partner to be an extension of that, right? Okay. Now, I also, um, you, you know, look for like, what are some of the external experiences, right? that that agency may have that they can help us learn, right? And so if I go down, they, yeah, they gotta be creative. They gotta be strategic, right? They gotta be all of those, you know, kind of foundational things, right? But is there something that we can learn from this group, right? That we don't have ourselves, right? And that's a mutually beneficial relationship, right? Beyond the financial exchange that occurs, right? From goods and services, right? And yeah. so 
Can I teach them something? Can they teach me something, right? And so I often look for partners that are willing to collaborate that way. Um, it's certainly something that, uh, that I, I look for in many agency partners, right? And I've worked with big ones, small ones, two man shop, two people shop, you know, one person shops. You know, that doesn't matter to me. It's like, are you good at what you do? Right. Mm-hmm. And, that, and that's the that's the piece that, you know, I, I coach the team to to kind of look for. Awesome. Brian, thank you so yeah. much. Yeah. Awesome. To have you with us today. Awesome. Awesome. I want to make sure that it was helpful for you guys. And again, thank you so much for uh, for having me. Yeah, Absolutely. for sure. So okay. Thank you so much. I think we recorded the session today, so we'll post it okay. to the YouTube within a week awesome. or so, so folks can reference it in the future. But we appreciate you sharing your knowledge and experience with us. Absolutely. Thank you. Thanks, Brian. All righty. See you guys. Have a great day, guys. Bye.